Hi guys! Thanks for watching my home game, uh, Bloodlines and Power. Um, I sure hope that you guys are enjoying it just as much as we are having fun playing it. Um, we are super excited about it. Um, this is going to be session three that you're about to watch. And as I stated in a disclaimer before, unfortunately, we are not professional recording artists or videographers or audio teams. That's not our main job. It's not what we do. And we did have uh, some technical difficulties on the video aspect of this uh, of this session. All of the audio is there so you can still hear everything. Um, so what we're able to do is take some still images and kind of rotate through so you can at least see those. Um, but please bear with us um, as we continue to improve and get better and learning as we're going. Um, we do thank you for your support again. Enjoy the show and uh, mate, we'll see you for session four once we're done. Thanks guys. Hi guys. This is DM Dunn, and this is going to be Bloodlines and Power Session 3. So, adventurers, is there anybody that is willing to attempt a recap of what happened last time we met? Ooh, everybody's jumping at it. <laughs> All right. So I will take the inspiration point that was available for that, and I will keep it for myself. So, last time when we started... You guys were waking up from arriving in Baldur's Gate af uh, after arriving in the late, late night, past midnight. <clears throat> um, Arcturus had woke up. Actually, he didn't go to bed, so he had a level of exhaustion. Will woke up, reducing his two levels to one. Um, Will was approached uh, um, with an opportunity to try to see if he could impress um, some of the paladins in the city. Um, he was given a task to go and get some, uh, talk to somebody in the magic shop, to go grab a fruit. The rest of the team joined in. Everybody decided, yes, let's go do that. It was going to be up in the Misty Forest near Daggerford. After you guys traveled north to Daggerford, you realized that Arcturus had the ability not only to get you guys room and board, but it was with his mom and pop. And so you guys found uh, Arcturus's um, home in Daggerford. After asking around, you guys got some directions on where in the Misty Forest the swamp was and this magical tree that had been transplanted or moved or planted uh, from somewhere else in the world. You guys made it through the forest. Uh, you guys ran into some little shrubs that tried scratching you. Will got a couple of little nicks, um, and then you guys decided to murder a hobo these shrubs, so you pissed off Mama we got Tree. got down to the root of the matter. <laughs> yep. No! Oh, no. no. Again. We're doing that again. Oh, oh yes. we do that Oh, again. yes. So, Mama Tree said, hey, and started trying to becoming the Whomping Willow and started attacking everybody. Um, and when it ended up with Mr. Uh, Will uh, laying on face down, unconscious, instead of doing a death save, he was given some healing. Who, who gave the healing? Was it... Arcturus brings him back to life. As the tree starts walking away, Will takes a dagger as an opportunity attack, reaches back, and kills the tree by stabbing it in its root foot. It was pretty cool. Um, you guys gathered yourselves, continued on. You found the tree. You also found a small green dragon that was protecting the tree. And you guys... Which attacked uh, us quite uh, shamelessly. Quickly. Well, he was standing there and he made his presence known. And you guys decided instead of to walk away and leave it alone, you guys decided to attack his tree anyway. So he defended it. Tree, we right? didn't attack a tree. tree. You guys were headed. You guys were threatening his tree. Okay. You want to rewind it? Interesting <laughs> perception. Interesting of that. Hey, that's our fault twist. though. We said he's going to do the recap. So, so yeah, that's that's a battle ensued and uh, ultimately you guys were able to get the dragon unconscious and tied up. And the decisions went back and forth. Do we kill it? Do we not? And ultimately, Will the Paladin decided to take his bludgeoning <laughs> hammer oh, here we go. and repeatedly smash the unconscious dragon in the head until it was dead, dead, dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they started traveling back. I remember that. <laughs> they, did, they did gather the, uh, the five fruits from the magic tree, uh, and then you guys were making your way back to uh, Baldur's Gate. 
And as we can, can I flourish one little bit though? Uh -huh. So when we were getting those those fruit, it was Rowena's dragon that tried to pick them and almost lost one of them. It dropped. But ended up being able to catch all of them. Being able to catch all of them, but didn't one fall? It was gonna like be gone. It flew down and, and grabbed yeah. it. She did a super awesome, super awesome dex roll, dex acrobatics move to swoop yeah. down and catch it before it exploded onto the ground. So mm -hmm. yes, the dragon did save one that was falling off. That was the pretty tree. cool. So <laughs> we now learning a little bit about uh, Rowena's dragon's name is what again? Belladonna. Donna and how it's awesome awesome. she is about doing things with you and then also having her own initiative to go and save things when they go bad. So that's what I learned about. Mm -hmm. Yes, very thank you, Will. Um, and so you guys were basically had made it back safely because you guys again attached yourself to a caravan of merchant wagons, not officially being hired, but kind of hanging back and following them anyways. Made it back to Baldur's Gate, which is where we're gonna start tonight. Does anybody have any questions or need any clarifications before we get going? Alrighty then. So, as you guys arrive into Baldur's Gate, it is um, later in the day. Uh, not quite evening, but definitely past midday. Um, and is there anything specific that you guys wanted to do, or do you guys want to go straight to the magic shop to return the fruits? Before we drop these things, let's get rid of them and get paid. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. So you guys can make your way back to the magic shop, and that is where you guys were talking with Bray, correct? Bray, right. Right. yes. So you're able to return the five fruits because you did not smash nope. one on the ground. Don't pick more than five. You don't, don't pick more, than, more five. than five. And you guys were able to retrieve all five of them. And does anybody remember what she had promised you once you guys returned with those five? Fifty gold each. And then. <laughs> there was yes, it was willow shade oil that will petrify. No, no, it was a, the potion of. The potion of depetrification from the willow shade oil, right? Yep. No, it is willow shade oil. So That's all it is. Okay, so it's not and a the willow shade oil itself. Is once potion. you rub it onto somebody. So we could well, technically he... take all five of these involved. <laughs> We're not well, I think you'd have to process them in some way. Yeah. But we've agreed that we're going to take money and uh, one, yep. one of these. Things. Some weirdly flavored chips for you. Okay. Pass them around. Oh. Um, so you guys were gonna do a willow shade, a willow shade oil. And I thought we were gonna get some. Did we get some healing potions already? Or you no? guys were getting. No. You guys opted for a hundred gold, which she gave you guys thirty last time, and then on delivery you're supposed to get the other seventy. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here is your willow shade, willow tree oil. Who would like to hold on to it? Healer. And she uh, also hands out the other 70 gold. Who takes it? Mm. <laughs> Will's like, I'll take nah, it! <laughs> I trust the paladin to take it. The paladin it. reached it and raised out for it first, so she drops the, the 70 additional gold mm -hmm. into the paladin's hand, so now you guys have been uh, been paid. Might you have anything else you need gathering? Um, at the moment, no. I'll be busy um, converting these fruits into my oils, but I do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Um, but maybe check back in every now and then, and maybe I can have something additional uh, for you later. Rough time frame for your processing times? I've got a few questions for you, but I don't want to take up your time. You want to get to these while they're fresh, I would think. Oh, yes. The fresher they are, the, the more potent the, uh, the, the, the juices are. So come back in a week? Or a couple for, days? For... Oh, a new job, maybe? Yes. Sure, just check in. Uh, I'll see if I have something that comes up. Absolutely. Do you sell components to spells here? Um, yes, I do. I have a list of things I've been looking into. Okay. Uh, yeah. Read it out. Sure. Uh, seven sharp thorns. Seven sharp thorns. Yes, I can get some of those for you. Uh, several seeds of a moon seed plant. So the seven sharp thorns. I think you could probably get a few of those off those uh, 
The seven, seven sharp thorns it. will be three copper. Three copper, all right. And what else did you need? Uh, several seeds of a moon seed plant. Of a what seed? Moon seed. Moon seed. Mm. Okay. That should come from party loot. Let me see. Moon seed. Yeah. For individual spell components? For individual spell components. Using, uh, so should we take that from the, the spell? I'll just take it. Mm. Makes sense. I'm told if it starts to get to be things like greater restoration, where you're looking at 300, 600 gold pieces in diamond seeds dust, of the moon? we're going like to hit the party for that. Right now we have 70 gold pieces for yeah. Several party seeds of any right. moon seed plant. we got to build up the party loot chest plant. first. Yeah. Here's the spell with the components on it. Not Shillelagh, the seventh form. Uh, this is for moon beam. Huh. Pull down your pants. Is, is um, <laughs> does it uh, get used up when you use this cast the spell? Uh, it does not say that it uses it. It's okay. a catalyst. So you're using it at one time. Yeah. And you can maintain it forever. All right. So, um, and you're doing moonbeam. Let me create it real quick. Hmm. I also need a piece of opalescent feldspar for that spell. The moon seeds are a bit more tricky to get. Um, how many seeds did you need? Um, several, so three, I imagine. I can get you three, but there'll be sure. three um, gold. That's fair. And then what was the other item? Ouch. Uh, opalescent feldspar. Feldspar. Is that something that gets used up as well, or no? Uh, well, I don't think any of these get used up. Okay, so it's just permanent. Yeah. Feldspar. Mm-hmm. Making sure I've got my components. If I need any. Some feldspar, you say? The feldspar! Will only be Excellent. eight silver. Eight silver. Fair price. I don't know about uh, that. You also have a <laughs> small straight piece of iron. Oh, I don't have iron here, but the blacksmith would be more than happy to help you with that. Well, and you have a leaf of sumac. A leaf of sumac. Hmm, let me go check in the back real quick. Right. And she goes in the back and comes back. Um, and what spell was that for? That is for Flame Blade. And that doesn't give it use it Yeah. Hmm. Challenge to get uh, the leaves from. Um, I've got, I've got a leaf available. However, it's five gold for the leaf. Five gold for the leaf. It is. Mm. Um, I think I'll wait for it to come back in season. Three. <laughs> she looks at she's like, very well. She puts it back in, slides it under. That's all there. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Yes. I need some. Okay. Uh, would you have a? You would not have holy water here, though, would you? Uh, as would I be... told you last time, the the church would be able to get that for you. That's good. No, no problem. Um, there is something else, though. I need a small silver mirror. Any idea <clears> where? <throat> oh, you need the merchants at the shops can get you a standard mirror. Fantastic. Unless you're looking for a magical mirror, I can probably mm-hmm. no, just a standard. Any standard silver mirror. <laughs> I don't do standard. I do exceptional. Um, fine sand. 
I'm sure I could grind up some sand smaller for you. Or, or rose petals. I got some coarse yes. sand, but don't worry, it'll be just fine. Uh, how much sand do you need? I have no idea. A pinch of it. A pinch for of it? For every sleep spell? No. Is it consumed? It does not. Oh well, yeah, if you're yeah, you're doing sand in the air. I'm gonna say it. And a rose pe- rose petals or a cricket. like a Z formation. A rose petal or a a cricket. A cricket. She goes. Um, Might there be crickets around? She goes. She goes. Um, I've got uh, here's. And she she comes back with like a, a beautiful rose, um, full of petals, and she goes. You can have the entire rose and all the petals for um, just eight silver. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, and it comes with, um, hmm, let's see, roll a d12 and multiply it by two. D12, multiply That'll be how many petals are on this rose. I'm gonna, um, That's not a d12, sorry. It's the one that almost looks like a d20. Um, 11 times two, so 22. 22 petals. Fantastic, thank you. Eight silver. I'm gonna pitch in four of those silver. Um, I'm just gonna be like, I need them too. <laughs> Eleven petals. Of, okay, so, go. so you just share the petals. Just so share the petals. Okay. Um, and then she um, she gives you uh, enough sand for. Uh, she, you just need a pinch. We'll yep. call it. Um, roll a d20. Ten. She gives you enough for ten uses of pinches of sand, mm. okay. and she charges you. Um, she charges you two silver for that. Thank you very much. Uh, one more thing: Would you happen to have fur or feather from any sort of beast? Uh, any sort of oh, I have a, uh, I have a hippogriff feather. It's quite exquisite. That sounds incredibly expensive. It is um, beautiful. And but amazing. expensive. It's not expensive. It's, it's, it's only eight silver. It's not that bad. Have anything cheaper? Fur or feather of any beast? She pulls out the hippogriff feather. <laughs> and it's beautiful. It's got some blue and some white on it. It's about, How what is that, about like five, five and a half, six mm-hmm. inches long. How dumb am I? Pretty dumb. <laughs> the fact that you had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he, he looks at everyone. Good self like, It's fine. Is that eight silver? There you go. Eight silver. Good God, we're getting cleaned out. <laughs> anything else? But it's pretty. Anything <laughs> else that can help anybody else with? Oh, it sounds like uh, sounds like you need some items as well. No, uh, just I've got a couple. I'll take a couple grains of sand from him. Oh, are you willing to share your pinches of sand with this one, or should I get him some sand for himself? Uh, do you have some extra sand? You do realize we could probably just go. Okay, to so Mark, go ahead. Um, Lux, sand. go ahead and roll me a d20. <laughs> okay. Find a rose or find a fur. Six. Probably. She'll give you six pinches of sand, and um, Will, what were you charged? Two silver. Pieces. Two silver yeah. for six. It's like a magic she piece. charges you uh, one and a uh, one and a half <laughs> silver, so one silver and five copper. Okay. Here's a moon. And you have six pinches. Of sand. <laughs> <laughs> so to clarify, um, as we're doing this, uh, a pinch of sand, whether it says consume or not, we're going to say it is consumed. Yeah, because you can't pick it up. Again. It's going to into the wind. Yep. So count your uses or pinches yes, right. as you guys have those. Okay. Anybody else? Huh. Now that you guys have gotten gold, it's nice to see that you've got an appetite for shopping as well. <laughs> <laughs> now we can. We hope she now we can now. shop. <laughs> we don't like credit. We like, you know, the loot. Well, should you need any other items, um, healing potions, you know where to find me. Thank you. Okay. So. What was the shop called? I know her name yeah. is Gray. Oh, I didn't give you guys the name of the shop? I don't know. Or I forgot to remember. It is... Oh, I'd like to buy ten gold pieces of leather. Okay, hold on one second. Of leather? Yeah, I need to make a saddle for the dragon. Mm. So that I can ride it. 
Mm. You might want to hit a leather maker as opposed to a magic shop. Yeah, yeah right just, there. just. I think we're going to blacksmith. Yeah, black, black, blacksmith. Then I need to spend eight hours. Um, as you guys look at the sign on the shop outside, um, above the door, it just says, "Exquisite magic." I'm sorry, um, Rowena, what do you need? Yes. What, what were you asking for? Um, leather, I, I need to build a saddle. So if I, 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 it takes a while, so maybe if I run off and get that leather, I can... Oh yes, the tanner will definitely have um, different types of leather available for you. Okay, I'm gonna go do that and then hang out in the, uh, the, the tanner, hotel. The tanner is close, to, uh, is close to the blacksmith. I think somebody needed yeah. some blacksmithing, so they're, they're, they're next to each other. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So you guys want to go to the blacksmith and the tanner? Mm -hmm. Blacksmith, tanner, yep. and general merchant. Okay. So let's go. So the tanner, you needed leather? Uh, ten gold pieces. Yeah. Ten gold pieces of leather. Okay. So go ahead and mark off your ten gold, and you are able to acquire the appropriate leather. Mm -hmm. And then what else? Um, blacksmith? Yeah. Yeah, blacksmith. I just wanted to find out how much a... Um, I'm going to change shirts, so I wanted to get the, the scale mail. How much scale mail costs? Yeah, I mean, in this town, 50 gold pieces on the ceiling, which is standard. Standard? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yep, 50 gold pieces. Yeah, get a 40, yeah, so that's good. Okay, and Arcturus? Uh, small straight piece of iron. Alright. <laughs> um, just any kind of all standard iron you want? Uh, organic, preferably. Organic, yeah. Well, organic. Yeah, iron does come. Iron does come from the ground. <laughs> You're a pretty smart one, aren't you? <laughs> um, and uh, and how big of a piece you needed again? Uh, hand size. Hand size. Sure. Um, and uh, he reaches into his like scrap pile and he kind of like pulls up one and he kind of like tosses it up on the counter. Um, um, eight copper. Sure. Thank you. And there you go. Anything else? Shopping. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Might you have any iron powder? Some ground up iron. Iron powder? Yeah, some shavings, shavings or hmm. poundings near the anvil or something. I haven't uh, had any requests for that, but I could uh, I could definitely, I guess, get some for you. How much are you looking sir, for? Maybe an ounce or so. I just need a few pinches, really. Oh, I don't know what an ounce is, but a few pinches? Sure, I can get you a couple of pinches. Um, and might you have been working on any silver well, recently? Oh, you, need well. si you need silver powder? Iron powder and or silver powder. Iron or silver. Which do you want? I can make a, either or. Obviously, silver is going to be more expensive, but because it's silver. I'm going to go with the iron. Iron powder. Two pinches. Give me about... Uh, me about an hour or so and come back and I'll have it ready for you. Alrighty. Um, obviously the labor and call involved with that is going to be obviously more than what the materials is, so um, we'll call it uh, five silver. Alright. Deal? Half now, half when you half when you pick it up. Okay. So we'll get two, uh, what, two silvers and five coppers now? Yeah. Okay. And then you can easily come back in an hour and you'll get it. So go ahead and just put it on there. Just go ahead and mark it off and get your um, two pinches of iron powder. Uh, I'm going to say bye to my friends. I'll meet, meet up with you again in the inn. I'm going to go start building my uh, saddle as you guys continue to You shop. have to do it yourself? Then? Where, yeah, where, do it where are you going? To the inn. You're going to build a saddle in the inn? Okay. So Don't Rowena... You have to can be we help? Here. Rowena, by your actual so Rowena, as you are entering um, Baldur's Gate, you guys are coming in from the North Gate. Do you want to park Belladonna in the stables there, or do you want to like walk around and put her in the South one, in the same place that she's been? Uh, um, I'll leave in the, in the northern. In the northern one. Okay. So as for her, it's going to be um, nine silver to drop her off, <laughs> and it's three silver a day to stable her there. Because word came around to the northern one too that there was a dragon that eats shit ton of meat every day. <laughs> she don't like she don't like no hay. <laughs> hey hey hey. hey, hey. <clears throat> All right, so mark off your nine uh, silver for that. Um, so yes, you can make it back. Are you gonna go back to the uh, annoyed pearl? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so you're back there. 
And you got your leather and plopping it out on one of the tables. Okay, got it. Um, any other shopping or anything else you guys needed for that? I want to go to uh, stop with the uh, chapel. Shrine. Chapel. We're going to get some holy water. Sprinkle of holy water for uh, whenever we're doing bless. Okay. Well. So you're going to go to the shrine of Helm, right? Uh, of Helm. Okay, Helm. Uh, and when you get to the Shrine of Helm, you've been carrying this <clears throat> burden with you from traveling, from smashing the dragon head, mm -hmm. and every step that you've taken coming back to Baldur's Gate, your heart feels like it's getting heavier and heavier. And this murder of this tied up unconscious dragon has been really messing with you on the inside. Um, and when you get to home, there's currently no staff um, at, at the shrine there. However, next to it is a shrine of Torm. And there is um, somebody there praying there. And they see you walk up to the, to the shrine of Helm. And Would you walk up and like try to do a little bit of praying first, or what would you want to do? Before I walk in, is it is it's a building, so it's an actual building, or is it a? We'll say that you're outside right now, okay. and there's like two. I mean, they're not they're not massive buildings because there's a bunch of uh, the shrines kind of like in this street for the different deities. So Will will have you know been contemplating what you know feeling this heavy heart, and uh, as he approaches right form he will uh, before he walks in or walks to the person praying he'll just take a sigh so you're uh, going to the thorn I'm going to torn torn yeah okay I'm gonna go to the go to the, the torn yeah. so as you sigh an audible sigh the uh, the individual stands up and turns and looks at you and is like oh greetings hello you also a follower of torn as well um, I'm a bit lost. Oh. And, uh, Helm has been there for me. I don't know. I, I just seem to be a bit, uh, I get a bit, lo a bit lost at sea, and, and I don't know why that this, that your shrine is just sort of appealed to me, and I, I just wanted to see what, see what this is about. Can you tell me more about Tom? Well, you've come to the right place, so, yes, and, Reaches out an arm to kind of like put on your shoulders if you're willing to like let him put sure. the arm on yeah, your shoulder. Yeah. And then we'll put arm on your shoulder and start kind of walking up the stairs towards the door. Mm -hmm. um, and you get a little bit of the history that maybe you were, have heard of but maybe you didn't remember that um, before they were deities that the, 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 um, Helm and Thorm actually worked together. Mm -hmm. And they had partnered up in the past to accomplish some great things. Um, and so they're not like enemies or anything. They actually just work together. And so this individual is giving you more in-depth lore and history on Thorn. Um, and you are getting a feeling of, um, oh, did I get it? Mm. Oh, it Murdered it. Nice. Oh, well, that's on camera. It's flying behind me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to go to a show. I think I murdered it. <laughs> I got to go to Thorn. Um, and so... <laughs> After spending, you're going to spend the rest of the day here, because uh, it's already kind of, you know, the, the day's already long at this point, mm -hmm. but if you're willing, you're going to spend the rest of the time because you're enthralled into this conversation, and your heart is feeling more comforted, and this person will actually, you know, before retiring for the evening, both of you will basically ask you to pledge your allegiance to Thorn instead of help. Um... And when this person asks you to do this, this individual um, goes to one of the cupboards on the sides and starts pulling out shiny plate mail and putting it on. And you can clearly identify that this individual is a paladin at this point. Mm -hmm. And this individual tells you, not only will Tholan take care of you, Take care of your emotional and your emotional turmoil and your emotional needs. If you pledge to be a paladin of Thor, as I am, you'll take care of your entire life as well. 
So strapping um, on. <laughs> Does he have a weapon? Uh, you don't see it yet. Okay. Um. And so, in the history of Torm, do I know that it's you know it worked well with Helm? Helm's not going to be a, Helm and Torm are sort of similar enough that it's not. Hey, if you're going away from Helm, you're you know, you're shunned. We're gonna you know. You yeah. turn your back on Helm. Do you get punished or something? Do you get punished or... No, you don't get anything like that. You'd be punished, no. Okay. Um, and I get this feeling that Torm is a... is It's a law, lawful good uh, god. And obviously paladins care about it. Um, it and I'm feeling... I'm feeling... Am I feeling more soothed? Yes. Okay. Um, and understanding that it is lawful good. Paladins respect form and uh, this guy's obviously pretty badass um, I will say I believe this is my path so let me clarify do you want form as your deity or do you wish to walk the path of the paladin in the name of Thorm? Um, I believe both of them are what I'm looking for come back tomorrow meet me here at dawn I'll start getting you ready. And what is your name, sir? Oh. <laughs> Random name generator. His name? No, I, have, I got notes, bro. No, 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 I got no, no. notes. I knew, I knew you did. And there is a a chapel of the Raven Queen somewhere in the city, correct? <laughs> My name is. <laughs> My... <laughs> all right, now that we're done with yeah. all that, where's the Raven Queen? My name is Tysla. I didn't want to. Sorry? Tysla. T Y L S A. Tysla. Tysla. Tysla, you've been. Mark. Inspirational. Um, Lux, what did you say? I'm looking for the Chapel of the Raven Queen. Okay, hold on. Or so Temple you're, or. You're trying to be a smart ass while I was looking at my notes. Is that what you were doing? No. Okay. I'm getting you ready I for the next thing you had to do. On his back. Oh, fucking Damien. <laughs> We've got uh, each other's backs. Yeah. So, uh, so, so Will. So against you. <laughs> so, yeah. so you're good? Yep, I'll so, come back. So they're going to tell you to come back tomorrow, and you're going to need Ooh, the entire day huh? to start learning this this paladin. Um, the okay. paladin over. Am I, being, am I expected back at the barracks? You are, if this is the path you're walking, this individual explains to you that, that no. Okay. You, you need you need not worry about being a town god anymore. You can retire, gather okay. your things, and meet me in the morning. I will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Tyra. Retire, uh, quit. Nice you know, give in your put, renounce in your, your position. Yeah, I need to go. Yeah, get my affairs in order. Yeah. Stand, stand on the table and pee on the pee on the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Take this job. Yeah, really it. You. <laughs> They're basically telling you if you're gonna become if you're gonna walk the path of a paladin yep. for Thorn, for Thorn, whatever you are doing to up. Up to this day, it doesn't matter. Meet me tomorrow for your day one of your life. Out of game. I still have a ba- the background of City Watch, but I'm no longer a City Watch. Member. Well, it depends on you. Are you going to go and quit and gather your shit and come I'm back tomorrow? To go, I'm going to go walk with a bit of a different step. Uh, sort of like a glassy-eyed, like I've seen the light kind of uh, view. And I am going to go and put in my notice. All right. Hey, watch your language. There you go. <laughs> So uh, you're gonna go. You'll go and you'll talk to your friends, tell them bye, all that kind of good stuff. And then tomorrow in the morning, you'll gather what belongings you have, and you will come back to the to the shrine. And this paladin will start teaching you the ways. And while I do that, the the grunts that I have been working with, not necessarily any. I, I just want to wish them really well and sort of like, you know, we, you know, you've been a good friend and it's been a good part of you know my my growth and. I'm sure our paths will meet again, all that stuff. So. Perfect. So you get all well wishes and encouragement and good luck and congratulations. You know, not everybody gets chosen to be a paladin, so this is awesome and they're excited for you. So, be one with all these games. so they're all trying to buy you drinks and trying to get you smashed. It's up to you how much you want to drink that night. <laughs> That's one of my flaws, man. <laughs> um, what? Does not uh, no. know when okay. to say, so say they, no. Okay, I'm gonna say no, no, we're not okay. No, they're, they're at they're at the they're 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 buying you. They're like, hey, it's another round. I got this one. Go to Will. Is there anybody that has I've known that I could trust in this group that could watch my back? You've known all these people for roughly a year, but you know they're a bunch of military assholes. So take it as you will. 
<laughs> that type. But they're all trying to buy you drinks because they know this is the last time they may see you because you're probably going to die trying to be a paladin. <laughs> <laughs> I will walk... The, so... I'm at the, the temple. I haven't seen these guys. These guys are off now. Um, I'm going to say no, but promise on my blood that I will see you again and I will be buying you drinks next time. You're turning down... Free drinks? That's a rude thing to do, Will. We're trying to give you a farewell, and this is how we do it. That's a fine how do you do. Uh, Good this, luck to this, you. This is when you do this and let it, like, pour over your shoulder. <laughs> okay, so, by the way, so DM, am I level three yet? You will be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You're still level two. <laughs> um, okay. Not, no, okay, that's fine. So officially I, uh, not yet, but like tomorrow when you start getting your training. Where are they buying me drinks? At the at the in the barracks, or are they going out? There's there's like a tavern like outside the barracks that was specifically put there for all the mili- all the military people. Okay, I I will I will join them, but I'm going to put a caveat. So the the when we walk in, the bartender, I'm gonna the first thing you do, who is the bartender? Who's the owner of this establishment? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna walk in like, hey, hey, are you? Are you the guy? Yeah. And I walk up and say, you need to cut me off. <laughs> and I'm going to give him two gold pieces. Yeah. Cut you off. After, I, I have to walk out of here and I have to be at a place in the morning. It's your job to make sure that I get out. Sure. Take an inspiration point you. for hey. playing the bank. Now I want you to roll me, my limits. <laughs> roll me a percentage dice. And hold on, before you roll it, if you roll a 70 or higher, he will make sure that, that you don't get smashed. If you roll a 70 or higher, no. If you roll a 30 or higher. 30 or higher. So 30 or percent high, chance? Yeah, 30 or higher, you're good. 29 or lower, yeah. he just yeah. takes the gold takes, and he doesn't lose his look track at you again. You. I would, uh, is this a trust issue or is it a, is it a capability issue? Because I really want to, I wanted to convince him, like, this is so freaking important. Doesn't matter? Okay. You got 70% chance. Better than 50 50. 84. Hey! Yep. Okay. So, uh, Even if it was 70. So, <laughs> after, so after, after about two rounds. <laughs> the bartender, not the server, comes out to you. The bartender comes out, and he comes out, and he puts a hand on his shoulder, and he looks right at you, and he's like, You doing good? Uh, good, good. All right, so that's two rounds, and then he'll come back on the third round. He brings him out, and he brings him out, and he's like, You good? Uh, I think I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> Still in there. Time. Okay. He, he looks in your eyes, kind of, Follow my finger. So now, do you are, are you really good, or are you or are you wanting him to like t- call you off right there? No, giving my three is okay. Three is good. I can go to four. I'm usually it'll be like five or six. So yeah. Okay. I'm okay. So he'll come out to it to the point to where you're not good, and he'll come out and say, "I saw. It. Are you still in there?" Uh, <laughs> and he goes. He goes. All right. Going, uh, he goes. All right. Uh, right. That's <laughs> enough. That's enough. Everybody say congratulations. This gentleman's done for the night. Huzzah! 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 He, and he takes you up and he puts you in a room. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Um, Rowena, when you arrive at the Annoyed Pearl, and you've got your leather, and you take one of your tables and you start putting all your leather out, and You've seen other people in your village make saddles, but you've never made one yourself. <laughs> um, you are proficient, right, with leatherworking tools. You have that skill, right? That proficiency, I believe. Um, it doesn't really mention it. I don't think in the paperwork. I, on, on the uh, Dragon Rider part. It does? On the Dragon Rider stuff. Check, look there. I think it does. Oh, yeah. I have a uh, leatherworker's pouch. And, okay, so I'm going to assume you're proficient with it as well. So you start working with it. However, you're nervous to cut it because you just spent 10 gold getting this leather, right? And you have the shears. You can cut it, but you're kind of like, you know, measure 18 times cut once. <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> And you can't have your dragon there because she's out. So it's not like you're like cut, putting it on her and stuff. 
And as um, you've, you've made some, like, you start putting decorations on, right? Where you know where it's going to be. You start decorating and make it look pretty, but you're not doing the hard cuts yet. Just because you're a little nervous. You don't want to screw it up. Um, and as you are doing that, um, and it becomes dinner time, you notice um, in walks. In walks. A tanner? Is it? Anlo. Anlo walks in and followed behind Anlo is uh, Ceroli. And they come, and when they open the door and they come in, they see you sitting there. They come in and walk straight to your, straight to your table and sit down. Thank goodness. And, uh, I'm making my first saddle and I have no clue how to start. Should I cut here? Should I cut there? Anlo looks at you and he smiles and he goes, so I take it your friend is ready for this next step. Yes, we're so excited. Well, congratulations. It's the most exciting. I tell you what. I order a round of drinks. Thank you. I can tell you what. Relax tonight. Enjoy it. And tomorrow, the two of us will meet your friend. We'll go out from the town and will help you not only get this ready, we'll also show you a, a few tricks that we've learned over the, over the years as well. Oh, thank you. And so they tell you to don't fuck up the leather, just chill, and then tomorrow they'll spend the day with you, because um, you realize that it's going to take a full eight hours just on the saddle alone. Um, so if, you're good, if you spend two days with them, not only will they teach you and help you make the saddle, but they will also teach you some dragon maneuvers I, on day two. I accept their offer gratefully, put all my leather away, and start enjoying the evening. And as the evening progresses, um, mm, oh no, I wanted to go to El Hazel's. Instead of the tavern. So I'm sorry, what? I want to go to Hazel's instead of the tavern. Okay, hold on. Okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Don't worry, we're still waiting to go to the Raven Queen chat. Yeah, okay. hold on, hold yeah. on. Just want to make sure. We're, we're, we're doing a little bit of time yeah, jumping actually, here. That's all right. I just didn't want you to forget. Give me a is, second this, this here. Cleric is a patient man. <laughs> Very unlike me. <laughs> So, um, Rowena, as your night progresses, I ask for stories. Then um, Anlo, he tells you, it's like, not only can I help you make the basic saddle that you need, if you've got the coin and the desire, I can teach you to make the saddle. Not just a saddle, but a saddle in which you cannot be dismounted if you choose not to be. I will take that. You cannot, be, you cannot be dismounted as long as you are conscious. And if you take your friend into battle and anybody attacks her, any attacks will be harder to hit her. Basically, they'll have disadvantage to hit her. I would like to take you up on that offer. I have 30 gold. Don't say the offer. Don't say the offer. Ask him what he wants for her. Rowena. Is it Rowena? And I trust him. <laughs> you are young and you are learning. However, the saddle of this power is far more than 30 gold. How much? I have friends. It'll be 400. Okay. I don't have friends that are that good. However. <laughs> I don't have that many friends. However, understand. The saddle will be with you and, and her forever. I I would love to accept that offer. Um, it's I not. Just don't have we it. have to get the materials. It's not like I. Yeah, you know. no, of course. It's just I don't I don't think we have that those kinds of resources yet, do we? No, but we gotta maybe in a, maybe we can strive towards. We gotta go yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. Maybe that's part of what we one of our quests. Right. So can but I can I take you up on that later at some point later? <clears throat> um. We'll need to make sure that we make modifications for your current saddles so that those uh, those additional the enhancements enhancements can be added. So we'll, we'll just make those adjustments for you. That's 
That's perfect. I said 400, right? 400. Yep. Okay. All right, and so then um, um, throughout the night, give me a persuasion roll, Rowena. You're asking them to tell you stories of like what their battles and stuff. The what? Uh, Fifteen. A fifteen. Um. Yeah. You. You hear some pretty cool stories. Um, And then he also starts talking about some of the specialties that the two of them have. Um, He, they have a maneuver that they call a uh, a charging strike. um, In which, whenever they are, um, when he's in the saddle and they are working together and he does a melee attack, uh, there's a chance that the enemy that he strikes goes prone. And takes extra damage. So, I, I was raised around dragons, and um, I was looking at uh, evasive, um, yeah. like three of the different, I know that there are several different yep. um, maneuvers to choose from. Maneuvers that you can choose from. Uh-huh. And the things that I, were in, I was interested in was coordinated flank, evasive maneuvers, and uh, scan the perimeter. Um, those are all le- the first levels. Yeah. Okay. Um, he's like, I'm familiar with those. Um, those aren't necessarily the ones that, that we focus on and specialize in, but I could definitely give you some some ideas on how to how to enhance those. As long as you know the four of us can go out, you know, away from the city walls and have some privacy, we could train on that over the next couple of days. Um, and so you t- get excited about that, and he te- he's telling you stories about the maneuvers that the two of them use, and some of the battles, and you're you're, you're getting like fired up. You're like, <gasps> this shit's on fire. And so you're pretty amped up. Okay, um, Lux, backing up. Uh, you leave the magic shop, and you wanted to. I am going off to find the chapel of the Raven Queen. The chapel of the Raven Queen is that your, is that your yes, deity? Yes, that's okay. my deity. So yeah. you follow, uh, you go towards the district where, you know, all of the... The religious the, district. Where the shrines are, and and, and um, Will is walking in front of you, he's kind of like, and then he kind of veers off towards... Um, towards. No, oh, that's his chosen temple. And, then you, and you're able to find it, so the Raven Queen is there. So I want to find the priest in charge okay. and talk to him about two things. One, uh-huh. I'd like to either... Find out how to make holy water, or purchase it. If you know, I would oh. think I could make it, but I don't know if I need to be oh. at a sufficient power level. It's easy enough here. How many uh, how many vials would you like? How much are they? Well, since you're a follower of the uh, Raven Queen, it would only be five silver a vial. Let's go four. So twenty silver or two gold? Yes. There you go. So mark down, you got four vials. Fantastic. Also, I know that with our Sanctuary Shield spell, one of the components is a piece of parchment with some holy script on it. Is that just maybe a dedicated prayer, or is it something that has to be prepared in a special way as it's consumed with the spell? Um, does it say consumed? Mm. You know, I thought it. I know I have to have it, but uh... yeah. Double check when you're looking at components because we're tracking components in this campaign. If it says consumed or not, because uh, if it's not, then you, once you have it, you have it. Like this feather and the whatever it was. The Arcturus just got some stuff too. H I. H I. As a metal piece. And Arcturus, you said you wanted to head to where? Hazels. It is not consumed, so I can just either create it or write it down. It's not consumed. Okay. So they tell you, um, yeah, yeah, I can find find something that will suffice for that, but um, you'll just need to come back tomorrow for it. I can do that. Um, Okay. So come back in the morning, and they'll get that for you. Certainly. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Now I'm going to shy on back to the the magic shop, and I'll, I'll conduct that offline. Okay, so we're not going to magic shop. So after you do the magic shop, which I apparently will do one-on-one, 
Um, then after that, are you going to go to the Pearl or what? I'd go to the Pearl after that. Okay. So Magic Shop, <coughs> we'll do that after a break. And then you wanted to go talk to Professor McGonagall. <laughs> <laughs> Professor and then do what? Uh, <coughs> I wanted to talk to her about the uh, symbol that I saw in that book. Okay. Professor Bow Wow. Any, anybody Professor that would know more or if she knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, as you go out and... Um, you you get to her place, and uh, she's actually walking out the door when you get there. And she's like, "Oh, Arturo, so you're back? I thought you. I heard that you left town. I'm back now. Uh, oh, okay. Do you have a piece of paper and some ink that I could scratch something down? Oh, well, I was just heading out right now. Is it is it something that's urgent? Uh, yeah. Well, come with me then. Oh, okay. might be fast. Um, and as she's walking down the street, you. Did you want to tell her anything as you're going? Yeah, uh, kind of like, uh, I grab the paper and ink and I'll write on the way. He pulls out, like a book, has notes and it goes to the back. I'll scratch out the symbol uh, mm-hmm. that I saw mm-hmm. and I'll show this to her. Do you know what this means? Hmm. She goes, yes. It's just one of, it's a, uh, it's a mage's, uh, symbol. It's this mage's logo. Um, any, all of the great mages, um, that's their trademark. Whenever they make an item of, you know, exquisite power or something, then they want to be proud of it so people can know that it's theirs and where it came from. And It's just a bragging symbol is all it is. Do you happen to know which mage in particular made this symbol or who I could ask to find that information out? As a matter of fact, yeah. I was, I was um, a professor up in Waterdeep. This uh, wizard uh, has been retired. This was a adventuring wizard, and um, he's actually one of the most popular ones around. Um, he has gotten stories of adventure and grandeur that would boggle most people's minds. Um, and obviously, he lived the life to be able to retire with uh, his riches and his fame. So now he's just pumping out relics and items, but that is, uh, that's Dude Varsk, D-U-D-A-I, Varsk, V-A-R-S-K, that's Dude Varsk, and his tower, the, he is established, is up in Waterdeep. Hmm. Where did you see it? Did you find one of his items? We took it, uh, the crew that we met at the tavern that you recommended. And as you guys are right, you arrive at a door and you go in, and it's a tavern. She's one, she sits down, she's ordering dinner. I'll order dinner. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, we took a job with a older fellow. I don't think we got a good look at his face, but he was delivering one of a large leather-bound book with this symbol on it to Kennedy. Was it on the cover? It was. Oh, 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 really? Huh. The only thing that could be is, it was a thick book or like a pamphlet? It was, I think it was fairly thick. Wow. I don't think I've ever been, had the opportunity to see this transition happen. It sounds like He's finally given up his memoirs, his his life stories. Most wizards don't do that until they've already passed on into this life. There must be a there must be a reason why he would be willing to give that up while he's still here. He must have definitely gotten something quite valuable in return for that. As something that the that the candle keep definitely would not have access to until he decided to give it to them. Certainly. Do you know if he's still alive? Well, I haven't been to Candlekeep in almost a year, but or I haven't been to Waterdeep in almost a year, but as good as he was adventuring, I'm sure that the city hasn't killed him. However, if his memoirs should go into Candlekeep, yeah, maybe he maybe he's been killed. I don't know. Honestly, I can't tell you. Hmm. Interesting. That maybe would that would might explain why it is showing up there. It's a possibility. Hmm. 
Maybe you should travel back to Waterdeep and find out. Maybe I will. And Not until after this dinner is complete, of course. And then um, as her food comes down and the plate is brought to you too, she, she kind of real, she didn't realize you'd ordered at the same time. She's like, um, was there m- more that you had to say? No, but I'm Just here. we could talk about life, see how it's going. Okay, so you spend the rest of the night trying to small talk with her and just kind of like puppy dog following and not let her in here go. Okay, got it. Perfect. Um, and then uh, Damien, you guys leave the magic shop. What do you do? I go back to the annoyed pearl. I'm going to play for the day. I've been away for a little bit. Okay. So it's in the evening. It's getting close to the dinner rush, and so they're definitely happy to see you. Yep. Um, on, go, go ahead and give me a uh, give me a performance roll. Gladly. Oh wait, am I level three yet, or should I use no. all stats? Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Why is this bag of chips right next to me, and where I can reach it? Because you're you're working on polishing that dad bod. Uh, Fifteen. A 15. Okay, that's good. Now give me a uh, d20 plus 5. 15. Is that Again. 10 plus 5? Yeah, that was 10 plus 5. You get um, 15 silver in tips from this meal session. The equivalency of 15 silver. I mean, there might be some Probably lots of coppers. Nice. It adds up to 15 silver. Um, okay, so you can do that, and then, all right, so the next day, Will, you say goodbye to all your friends and your buddies for the, that you've been hanging out with for the last year, and you go to the temple, and you start your training with the, uh, the, the new paladin. Tesla. Tesla? I don't know. It's your palate. It's your guy. We talked about Tesla. Whatever. And Rowena, you. Um, you said Tesla? Tice, T-Y-S-O. Oh, okay. You are followed out to the uh, to the stables where Belladonna is, and then the four of you guys walk away from the city out into uh, a, a, um, an isolated area. It's kind of safe from view. And you guys spend the next two days um, making your saddle, but when it gets monotonous, you guys take a break, and he's teaching you the, those three maneuvers that you wanted to learn as well. So over the next two days, you're going to acquire those I, those things. Can I take my slippers back from the end? Because I'm broke. Can you take your what? The slippers back from my, the end. Oh yes. So you'd get six back. You get six silver back from that. Um, uh, Arcturus, the next day, um, well, that that evening, eventually she's going to go home. I mean, are you going to try? Are you going to follow her home too? You're, uh, so how's this? I'll go back to the town. She looks at you, having 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 dealt with your conversation of her entire meal. She's kind of looking at you as like you're going to buy her meal too. Of course, of course. Okay. So um, go ahead and mark off um, uh, three silver for both your meals. Um, and then, so you're going to go back to the Annoyed Pearl? Uh, before we leave, I want to ask her if she could help me figure out how to use the new, I would pull up like blue crystal and stuff. I'm still a little unfamiliar with this. She tells you, come back tomorrow and I'll help you with that. All right. So then you'll spend that next day um, learning your new spells. No late night study sessions? No. So she tells you to come back tomorrow, and then you spend that whole next day, and she's teaching you your new spells. Uh, cool. And then Damien. out for you. <laughs> so Damien, the next morning when you get up um, and you've had your breakfast and you start playing the music in there, um, you hear somebody, or you see somebody just kind of like, Looks in the doorway. The door's open. They just kind of look in the doorway. And they look straight at you, like where the music's coming from. Welcome in. They look at you and you're like, Bard, come here. He comes, he goes over. And he steps, and he steps outside. Okay. 
and uh, it looks at you and is like, are, do you visually have more than one instrument? Uh, he just has his lute out at the moment, probably. N- no, he might have his harp strap somewhere. So you, so you can see the harp and you're holding the lute. Yeah. Okay. And um, and then when he when you walk, you see the individual that kind of stuck their head around, but you also see like four other ones. So there's like five of them there, and, and you can tell they all they're musicians as well, uh, and storytellers. They're all got the flamboyancy going. Did I miss an invitation? And they're like, "Well, here it is. We're having a meeting. Have you been Have you been to the uh, to the College of Law yet?" Absolutely not. Uh, where? What? Why they give they give they give it? you they give you a hook over the arms like let's go. Absolutely, he takes it immediately. <laughs> and he kind of leans back and is like, "I'll be back maybe." <laughs> to and the, and um, as you start walking there, explaining to you is like, um, every so often uh, we all gather up and we get to share uh, stories and excitement and tales of our of adventures that we've heard and adventures that we've had and songs that we've learned. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic. I've learned how to actually play my lute upside down. Last time we had one of these, it was ridiculous. I usually do it this way. They taught me how to do it that way. It stuns the crowds when I, I do it. I thought you meant upside down, hanging upside down. We'll have to up the Holy end. shit. <laughs> Boys, <laughs> I'm at the list. We're going in learning. <laughs> I like you already. And, and say the same. And um, they explain to you that it'll be the next two days. Um, this this uh, this gathering and it's like you know, well, Matt, and let's let's do this. You know, the more the merrier, the better stories that are, you know for all. And um, they'll take you to a uh, conference room that, that, that they've rented out. And dude, it's like bard heaven. There's, <laughs> He's having so much fun. They're gonna tuck the little pretty feather uh-huh. in the back of his ear like a cap too. And there's pe- there's a dude with like a peacock feather too. It's like oh, and he looks at you and is like, love the feather. Love the feather. <laughs> and he pulls the, he pulls the feather out. It's kind of like fun. like a feather cheers. Ding, beautiful. Can say I've never done that before. You have now, and that's what we're here for. And so you're just having a great time. It's like, you know, Comic Con for nerds. It's nice. it's Bard Con for Bards. Um, and Bard you're He's having so much fun. You're hearing stories. What's nice is you're hearing stories of um, the Asher's Adders that you haven't heard before. Oh, he's having so much fun. Like um, notebook. You're like pulling out, you're taking notes. That's yeah. that's cool. Um, and it's really awesome. He's you know, mate, you're you're digging it. It, it's it's good shit. He's gonna tell some of the stories of the people he's been traveling with, mm-hmm. and like as he does, he's kind of realizing, oh wait, wait, we've kind of assembled like, wait, this could be the beginning of something much bigger. He's starting to realize as he's dramatizing in the college. So very cool, awesome. So you're gonna be doing that for the next couple of days. You're doing that for a couple of days. You're doing that for at least today. You're doing that for a couple of days. <clears throat> Lux. <clears throat> What happened to our stuff here? Lux, as you um, finish breakfast in the morning, mm-hmm. you uh, notice that um, Rowena left with the uh, the two, off with the, her boy, the, new the, boyfriend and girlfriend. The two people that you, that you saw before, and she told you, hey, she's a dragon! So, But you haven't seen her as a dragon yet. Um, she still had the blue hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they disappear. And... Um, Rowena, uh, as, as they're walking away, he's like, I'll see you in a couple of days! <laughs> the bard gets pulled out to college. Yep. The bard, you see, you see that whole thing get pulled out and like basically <laughs> arm in arm skipping down the street. Uh, hey! um, and then Arcturus, how did, how did, what time and how did you want to leave? Because you were given permission to show up at her house today. Yeah, going out first thing in the morning. So he's like, fuck breakfast! I'm running! <laughs> Are you up yet? 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 He yet? is. <laughs> <laughs> he's always up. He's a teenager. Four tower, four tower. <laughs> All right. Um, and then you're paladining. Um, so, Lux. Everybody's out. So, what happened? Feeling abandoned and unwanted. <laughs> so, what you do is you step out. Um, the front door of the Annoyed Pearl. Breakfast is done. You still got ba- bacon, a belly full of bacon, and you still got like four strips. Life strip, is good. You still got like four strips in your hand. You got you just like you're still baking and you got, as you're walking. You're like, yeah, bacon to go, baby. 
and you decide that you just kind of maybe want to like venture off towards the the market area. It's great for people exactly. watching. Exactly. And as you are walking, what's your passive perception? Fifteen. No, mm. thirteen. Mm. Okay, give me a give me an active roll as well. See if you get better than what'd you say, fifteen? Yeah. 15. One. So thirteen. Oh wait, thirteen plus uh perception sixteen. So sixteen. So as you're walking Remember, in Baldur's Gate, there's this, like, marine <clears throat> overlay that's just always there. The haze. The haze is always there. Um, and so the side streets and the alleys are always a bit obscured um, because as we are walking into a fog, it opens up kind of like where you are, but you still can't see super far in front of you. But you notice um, about maybe 20 feet into this alleyway... Oh. And there's some steps that go up and a door on the side of this building. And as you're just kind of nonchalant, because you're not necessarily looking to buy a just widget. Around. You're just people watching. And you notice there is an unusual amount of people going in and out of that door. Mental note. And um, so when people are going in... They seem to do a knock. The door opens. It seems like they stand there for a moment, and then they're they're brought inside. Um, it is really piquing your interest. I think I'm gonna go knock. Okay. So as you're approaching, you cross the street, and as you're going down the hallway towards the stairs, you see the door open, and you see um, three people walk out. And they seem to be kind of smiling and laughing and stuffing something into a bag as they kind of come down the stairs and they walk past you and say, hey, hey, good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> and uh, you walk up to the stairs and you look at the door. And there's no sign on it. There's no symbols. There's no logo. There's no nothing. It's as much as I'd expect. You do see like a little speakeasy. There's like a little square... Mm -hmm in the door that is closed from the inside. There's a door in front of you. Oh. <laughs> the, little, the little window on the sticky easy opens up. Yes? I'd like to come in. And you're shopping for something specific? Yes, I am. It's one of those things you know it when you see it. The door opens. The head kind of pops out, kind of looks down the street past you. All right, come on in. Thank you. <clears throat> and as you go in, it's just like a little, like a mud room, if you will. It's like a small little room, one doorway, not a door, a doorway, a hallway that goes down. And as you go, um, you turn, you make a left-hand turn, and you go down another hallway, and then a doorway opens up, and you open up into basically like the, a warehouse, yeah. huge building, tall ceilings, and in this warehouse, you you can hear it before you get to the end of that doorway. There's commotion, talking, people, um, and as you enter, there's aisles and aisles of what look to be merchants and like shops and booths. Lux, you have found the black market for dragon parts. That's what I thought. So. What would you like to do? Hmm. I'm looking around, looking for... I mean, there are no signs and labels. It's just... So it's, but, it's a bunch, <laughs> bunch of different like vendors and booths that are all set up. And so um, you're seeing... Um, you know, people that have like piles of different color, like dragon scales, and you're seeing jars with like dragon pieces floating in it, and you're seeing I'm judging from a distance. all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Marina, somehow, you know nothing. You're, 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 fine prickles you're out in a pasture wrong. building a saddle. Now, still go build your fucking saddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Judging. I'm gonna go to the scale guy. Okay. Uh -huh. It's a fascinating selection of scales. Uh, do they look familiar at all? Some of them, or no? I mean, there's different colors, for sure. Yeah. Some different sizes as well, so... So I can pull out my pieces of scales, yeah. Wondering if you know where the providers are. 
because I'm interested in joining their groups and I pull out my scale. So when you pull out your scale and you put it up onto the table, you realize that there are scales much, yes, they're much bigger. Much bigger oh, yes. than yours. I, I understand that. <laughs> Um, but I've got a tooth and a scale. And, like, and, uh, and the lady uh, at the table says, The Pophite says, Well, let me see your symbol. I don't have one yet. I, that's what I'm trying to do. How did you even get in here then? I said I wanted to sh go shopping, and it's one of those things that I'll know it when I see it. Are you a shopper or a provider? I'm currently a shopper, but I want to become a provider. Ah. So you kind of get you kind of get a visual up down straight up looking at you, judging you like. Mm. This was from one I encountered in just north of here. And she sees your tiny little green dragon scales. And, and she it's goes, a tooth. I got a tooth as well. Oh. It's a little wormling, but. Yes. You got to start out somewhere. Well, you know what they say. It's not always the size of the dragon you kill. It's how easy it was to kill it. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a story. <clears throat> um, and she goes, well, if you're looking to make the conversion, you're going to need to go down to the end of aisle three, and you're going to need to talk to that group over there. Thank you. But well, don't forget your, uh, your I, little, I, I, your dra mighty dragon scales. <laughs> and um, as you go down, as you spend some time in here, you actually are able to identify and locate um, what you're looking for, which are the dragon hunters. Mm -hmm. um, and what you're able to find out is not that there's not, it's not just dragon hunters. What you find out is that there's three different versions. There's three different, basically, clans Interesting. of dragon hunters. So you've got, to simplify it, give me an investigation roll. Let's find out what you do find out. Let's find out if you do find yeah, out. Yeah. 16. All right. So you find out that there's three different ones. You find out that there's one that is basically... Um, headquartered in the city, you find one. You find out and hear about there's one a station or headquarters in a forest, and another one is headquartered in the mountains. And basically, sixteen. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm surprised they let me in. You know that the dragon swords are the. Oldest and like the originals. Um, Are they the cities or the forests or the mountain ones? That one would be the city. And then you have the. The lights of the Golden Triumph. These are the ones that were in the mountains. And then what you kind of gather is the the green swords, which is the third one. They were just not happy with how management was running things. They thought they could do it better. And so that's how that one started. They just kind of created their own. It's like, well, you guys are doing a shitty job. I can do it better. And so this third one was created. <clears throat> have an affinity and they're the one and the green swords are the ones that are uh, out in the forest but they're out in the forest how are you going to find them yeah yeah, we're, yeah exactly how are you going to find them um and so this being the black market um ironically enough with the 16 um each of them do have recruiting stations so if you wanted to join one this would be your opportunity should, to I gather some information I should go and talk to each one and talk about what their specific skill sets are required. Yeah, you've got obviously three clans to join. Is there a benefit of one over the other, or a uh, well, of course, different all, skill set that gets in? All three of them are going to be talking about how theirs, of course, is the best. Yes. If you're going to join them, you know, 
Yeah. Yeah, but you're also wondering, well, what areas might they specialize in, or what would they focus on? And so, what the reality of it is, it's um, one product, mm -hmm. three different suppliers. It's pretty much the same. It just depends on you know who you want to be attached with. Do you want to be attached with like the originals, the OGs um, that are there in the city? Do you want to be you know the lights of the Golden Triumph um, out in the mountains, or do you want to be part of the Green Swords out in the forest? I mean, you don't have like even with the sixteen, you don't, you're not having like hundreds of years worth of knowledge and lore on all of them mm -hmm. that's kind of that's the information you're going to get basically is where are they headquarters where they're mostly at kind of how like i said green swords broke off and created their own that's how they kind of, so they're the newest um the um the dragon swords is the oldest that's the first one the dragon swords the lights of the golden triumph and the green swords Obviously, each one is going to cost some amount of dues or and you something learn, to you join. Learn that whichever one you join, <clears throat> when when you are a um, dragon hunter, fifty percent of your money goes the towards tank. goes to them. So they take a half a fifty percent cut of whatever you sell. Doesn't matter which. All three of them are fifty percent. Mm -hmm. In that case. Um thinking it's probably going to be easiest to go with the cities because cities might be a lot easier to find okay so give me a persuasion roll on your interview persuasion oh good i also have this small tooth and scale of one that i had recently encountered and defeated just in case they're curious. Oh, are you just are you giving that um, to us to uh, to add to your application, or are you just trying to say that you're worthy with having those? Which one benefits me more? Oh, good lord! <laughs> <laughs> Rolls a twenty-one. Twenty-one. They reach out their hands like, "Hand me your items." What did, What did you have? It was a green dragon tooth and a couple of green dragon scales. So two scales and one tooth. Yeah. And they're like. Oh, we would be so rich now. The good news, sir... <laughs> What's your name again? Armager. Lux Armager. Lux Armager. Yeah. Why do you want to join this group? Deep down personal family connection. Family connection? <laughs> Are you a... You've got Dragonborn in your blood? No. What do you mean? Dragon Slayer in my blood. Which clan are they part of? It wasn't part of the original clan. We are the original clan. Well... I'm a descendant of one of the Asher's Adders. Oh, you don't mean... Dragon Hunters, you mean the Tiamat Killers. Yes. <laughs> so you are uh, related to an adder. Illidar. Hmm. That's my uncle. Interesting. So, what? You think that your uncle kills dragons, which means it gives you the ability to do it yourself? No, I think we got a raw deal from him. Hmm. And you're looking to square that deal? Best ways by calling him down a little bit, I think. All right. Well, if you're ready, you're starting. Your training starts right now. Wall ears. So then you are taken, and for the rest of that day and the next day, you become initiated into becoming a dragon hunter. You are given a set of dragon tools. You are now trained in them. You become proficient in these dragon tools. These dragon tools will allow you to field dress a freshly killed dragon. So we should have waited to get the get the seeds. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think I put it in the Many more to come. 
Alright. Um, like pre prerequisite, your strength is at least 13, correct? Yeah, 14. Yeah, yeah. Your wisdom is at least 15? Yes. And your charisma is at least 15? Yes. And you're not evil, right? Nope. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> so, half of your wealth obtained um, is dedicated to the dragon swords. Should you ever fail to pay these, you will be stripped of all of your benefits as a dragon sword. You must declare yourself to the dragon swords and its well-guarded secrets. It's like being a mason with a secret handshake. The practice of the dragon hunting is illegal. I'm aware of that. Therefore, it is never discussed openly. So, you now will have, because they offer uh, this two days of training, you will have advantage mm -hmm. against frightful presence. a frightful presence saving throw. Advantage to breath weapon saving throws. And you have some more stuff when you get older. But you yes. also, or when you get older, when you get more ranks in it. <laughs> um, you also have the dragon tools. You're also given a rough idea of the economy of dragon parts. Um, some things that are, are of value and use. Blood, vials of blood, um, and sets of ten. Sets of ten vials of blood. Claws, per claw. Uh, the dragon fundamentium, which is basically what they use to ignite their breath weapon. Their dragon eggs, dragon eyes, Gizzard, heart, horn or bones, liver, tooth is per tooth, their skull, scales, tongue, and wings. Now you also do know that trying to get the uh, dragon fundamentium the breath weapon thing. If you fuck it up, you have a chance of hurting yourself. Same thing with the gizzard. Should you have a failure in trying to harvest out the gizzard, you have a chance of hurting yourself. You have a chance of failing all of them and ruining it, but those two could actually hurt you. Literally blow up in your face, so to speak. <laughs> yes, literally. Um, in general, the most expensive items to get the most profit for would be the heart, wings if they had them, the dragon fundamentium, and the skulls. Everything else has value, but those four items are the top. <gasps> the off. hardest ones to get. Yeah. Right. Right. That paladin smashed the skull into pulp. God. You do realize that obviously the more value the item has, the harder it is to get it. You also do realize that there are, yeah. there are um, spoilage. Items can spoil, meaning you've got to get them to the market before they spoil. Is there any magical preservation that can be used? Or? You have stuff as short as half a day, like blood and blood. <laughs> um, and then you have stuff as long as three days, like the tongue and the fundamentium and the gizzards. Scales might be longer than I'm guessing. Some of them don't have spoilage, like the claws don't spoil, eggs, horns and bones. Mm -hmm. Scales don't, skulls don't, teeth don't, and wings don't spoil. So you're getting a rough idea of all of those. And of course, you, it's quite obvious that a wormling doesn't give you as much value as a young dragon would, which doesn't give you much as an adult or an ancient. So obviously the bigger and older the dragon, harder it is to get it, the heavier it is, but also the more money you get. More risk, more reward. So, um, I mean, you know, you're so looking who's at... with me? <laughs> so, like, you were talking about, like, yeah. you were talking about the skull. So, like, the wormling skull was is 200 pounds. So that skull that he bashed would have been 200 pounds you had to carry. So you realize that you're going to have to start accounting for the weight of these things as well as the spoilage in order to get them 
Gonna need a fast wagon. As well as you're gonna get them secretly mm -hmm. to, to the black market. Yeah, I was gonna say. Without what's your the next step of getting this through the city enough. walls? Uh, there. Can of barbasol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. With dinosaur DNA in it. to discuss this Maybe. and come to some sort of arrangement. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so you're getting it. That's kind of what you're getting. The rough idea of all of, all of those. Okay. So, um, yeah, you're getting a rough idea of weights and things like that as well. Okay. But yes, the blood um, liquids are of um, 10 each. So, like, blood is 10 vials in order to get some recognizable monetary value. Right. Unless you're using it for your own spells or something. Okay. Know. So, there you go. So, for the two days, you're doing that. So, now we fast forward two days later. Guess what? You are proficient in dragon hunting. You've got a saddle and have dragon maneuvers. You're a new paladin of what? The Oath of Redemption. Oath of Redemption. You've learned that. You're like, fuck the city guard. I am a paladin I'm a of basic. redemption. I'm a you are a bard of the College of Lore. And you have learned some new spells. Right? Yeah. You... <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, hey. I my last time. Hey, no, well. no. At level two, at level two, he was able to fucking turn into a star. Yeah, yeah. Cool. None of you guys can turn into a star at level no, two. Yeah. We're at least level five. All right. So. How much was that mirror? I got to go buy one. Uh, I think it's five gold pieces, but we can talk about it. A mirror? Yeah. Mirror? Yeah. Small, small silver, silver mirror. Small silver mirror. Maybe I can just borrow it from you once in a while. Um, actually, I think mirrors are in here, aren't they? I've looked online. It's five gold pieces. Oh, it's five. That's small ridiculous. Steel. Uh, a steel mirror. Yep, five gold pieces, and it's a half a pound. Yeah, Half pound, five gold pieces for a steel mirror. What about silver? Um, mirror? Nope, that's all it's got. How does coin work again? For John, ten, coins were what, 50 for a pound? Coins? 50 for a pound. 50 yeah. coins for one pound. Yeah. All right, steel mirror. Yeah, steel mirror, five gold pieces, half pound. Okay. So how do we divvy up that 70 gold she gave us? Everybody so, got uh, twelve. Or actually, does say you gotta be careful. Hang on, it's it's a small silver mirror. Is what it says. It's not a steel mirror. Yeah, oh. silver. So and I don't know where I would find a small silver. Mirror. It's the same. That's it. Five gold pieces as well too. So it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. gonna be in in, in the thieves in the thieves tools they have a small mirror inside of there. It's a silver. It's mirror. part of the thieves tools. Though. Right. It's not steel. It's silver, silver for the spell. Oh, you need you need a silver mirror. It just said a small silver mirror. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. say. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're trying to use it for a fuck spell uh, component. Kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, so. Spell component for sanctuary. Um, so this is still you need silver. Yep. So still is five. We're gonna have to double it. It'll be ten gold for the mirror. It doesn't get consumed, right? No. Nope. Okay, right. so it'll be ten gold for okay. a silver mirror. Did you mention you needed it earlier? Sir. Like when we were going to the shopping and stuff. Yeah, I did. Uh, how nice was the restaurant Hazel and I went to? Like, would there be silver mirrors in the bathroom? Oh, you mean... <laughs> 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 oh! Woo! Silver go. mirror? Um, oh. I tell you what. Hazel's oh. is nice, isn't it? <laughs> if you roll a d20... No, the restaurant. Not, roll, not a a d, roll a d20, and on a 16 or higher, they are. Uh, they look like they look like metal mirrors. Polished brass. Maybe not. Maybe not silver. They're pretty though. Okay. Single pieces. I like the way you think. Okay. So, as you guys are doing this, um, you guys eventually, I'm assuming, you want to meet back up together. Yep. And uh, probably at your favorite watering hole. You start. You get all excited about all your new shit that you guys gain, and oh my god, I got a saddle! And my, I can ride. I can ride Belladonna now. I don't have to walk anymore. There we go. So what do you guys want to talk about? Who wants to do what? So you guys meet back now. Now it's two days have passed. 
it's so day three. So the, the paladin master hasn't given me anything. I've, he hasn't said, hey, this is how you go get your awesome plate mail or anything like that. Maybe. So, I mean, so you need to know that before. So he's given, to, he's, given you, he's given you intense training for two days. Okay. And he tells yeah, you, he tells you, take some time off. And when you're ready, I've got a, I've got a job for you. Thank you, sir. I'm be with you. Cash unless, unless you're ready now. Yeah. I'm ready yeah. now. I can help you with that. So I'm gonna come. I'm gonna approach everybody with a slightly, <laughs> a slightly, you know, more calm, just chilled out. A straighter spine. Yeah, straighter spine. Yeah, actually, more chilled out. Hey guys, how's it going? You look different. I'm feeling different. Yeah. Hey, you don't know, Melina. Hey. I'm really sorry about that dragon. I think I could have handled that differently. Did you hit your head? Is he drunk? Is he drunk? Are you stoned? No, no, no. I <laughs> see things differently. He's no, have you been licking frogs? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all good. Eating mushrooms? So no, everybody, we're, we're all good. We're, it's all good. Everything's fine. I've just learned, I've, I've learned more about the, the light of Torm. And oh, Torm okay. has oh. shown me. It's more powerful than. Torm than is. Is. A loving God. Is a truly loving all creature kind of God. Everybody can re- be, be redeemed. I've been redeemed. <laughs> that was me plugging in the music thing. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Torm? Torm! <laughs> Torm's got like a big. Like a, like a, like a, like a, like a fist with a glove. Like yeah, it goes so all the way up all, to here. All that <laughs> no, you know. So I can move. I think in the words of, was it, Sir Teddy uh, Rosewina? <laughs> Walk softly, but carry a big stick and a club. A big war hammer. <laughs> a war hammer. I carry a free on my cane. Yeah, there you go. But walk softly. That's the first part of that. That's how I'm gonna walk from now on. But I'll still carry my big stick. Is he wearing plates? Maybe I can be more effective. Is he wearing what? Plate? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to say, there's no way he's going to walk softly in plate. <laughs> spiritually. Spiritually loves. I'll forgive Everybody, him. And, and, and so, so if I'm level three now, can I just, can I put on my, uh, um, what is it? Sorry, not my, my oath. What's my special ability now? One of the uh, channel divinity. I'm going to use my new channel divinity. To um, to basically uh, add some five points of charisma for ten minutes. It's gonna be really convinced. Like I can go and just convince everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend ten minutes and tell everybody about Torm. Okay. And how awesome Torm is. Go for it. So roll a persuasion. <laughs> and you get plus, a plus, plus five. You get a plus five. To my persuasion, which is also fun. And then oh. everybody. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. And everybody else roll a Constitution saving throw. If you're if you're going to go if you're gonna re- try to resist it. Oh, I will. Uh, <laughs> so, so if they want to resist it. Yeah, it's saving throw if they want to resist it. Otherwise, it'd just be a, a Constitution. Fifteen. So roll a D twenty and add your Con modifier for not trying to resist it. So I rolled a one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> plus five, so, yes. so, With, so plus, Woo! so plus ten. Oh, it's plus so ten, but I still rolled a one. Oh, what do you have? A, do you have an inspiration coin you want to use? No, I don't want to use my inspiration. Okay. This will be so, funny. so, so it's eleven. So you're at eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Did anybody roll lower than eleven? No. Yes, I rolled a five. So you are all <laughs> into this storm. Everybody else, you can choose to or not to. <laughs> He, you definitely see. And, and he I'm, is I'm, ser- I'm serious about. It. Like I'm, he, not, I'm yeah. not trying to persuade you or anything. I'm just yeah. like, hey. He's not. Persuade. He's not joking. But he is explaining and talking and putting it. facts out there. And Damien, you're like, fuck yeah, this makes so he's much sense. He's a changed man, and I'm gonna clap you on the back when you're done. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I listen politely. Well, I just found something you can believe in. I believe in I'm you happy. too, Lux. I believe in everybody. Everybody is redeemable. Mm. Everybody, even that dragon. I'll just sort of, I'll just sort of like the dragon. Did, did you even get his name? 
<laughs> fucking murder hobo sons yeah. of bitches. <laughs> they all, they all, they're all, they're all, I don't think they're they're all gave us his name. He just tried to fucking murder hobo us. I think we tried to talk to it, but it didn't. We did. Yeah, yeah the minute we, we did, did it, it said nothing. It just flamed us. Or yeah. That was one of the things, like, I could have tried to talk to it more, really understand it. But. No, no, it, it attacked right away. But you're no, reliable I, in the same way. I, I like this new iteration. Me too. <laughs> Literally, uh, there's no peace god though. So anyway, Torm is close enough. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got an oath of redemption, so that's like. Uh, and the, by the way, the, the, the you'd love the picture. It, even Xanathar's guide, he's got like, it's like a peace peace neck dragon boy. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So explain that. So as you guys um, do that. Um, then everybody, anybody else want to mention anything else that they've discovered or, or done that's new? Um, Damien's probably just going to, well, glad we all came back changed. How did everyone else's weekends go? I, for one, heard the most incredible stories I have ever heard in my entire life. I got more about Ashes Adders that I'd never even heard of before, and I did learn to play my loot upside down. Is there anywhere I could have came from here? There's Raptors. He starts looking up. Yeah. <laughs> so you heard about Asher's Adder, so I'm curious. Backstory, a little curious. Wow, what did you learn about Asher's Adder? Oh my goodness. All right, and he's going to launch into it. You story. fucking ass! <laughs> 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 but yeah, let's, here we go. Um, um, yeah. Bongos. What's he going to do? Do I detect any obvious... Uh, huge exaggerations or obvious... Hasn't, he hasn't said anything yet. Um, I don't know. He's going to launch into um, stories about, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Simi and her uh, bow and arrow and how Who? she got it. The Who? Simi. What? So I'm like, like just, you know, ears, my extra elf ears. Like, pick, or, no. Not, <laughs> me up. Simi. I've heard a lot about, I've heard about Simi. Oh, yes. And have you heard about her bow and arrow that she shot at and... Heavily wounded, turned the tides of the battle against I, I Team have. I heard the I heard the stones on her oath bow were, were yes. truly remarkable, legendary, truly huge. Are, are you connected to Simi? No. Well, I don't. Well, I, I don't know. I'm very interested. I've heard sto- I've heard a story, and it just piqued my interest. Now I'm even more. Now I'm even more. Wow. Would you, you like heard to hear how she got the bow? Yes, and he's going to yes. launch into that story and say, how? Oh, uh, should I just roll? No! Do you need to know the story? you want to tell us or no? I don't know if I know it well enough to go, but I can try. Okay, you want to roll a performance for the story? Yeah. Okay, so. performance check for the story. <laughs> now I'm level three. <laughs> now you're level three. <laughs> 22. 22. So, the, so give us what details you know, and then... Um, the four of us can fill in any blanks. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know it better than I do. It won't be that way next week, but um, he's just going to talk about how uh, she found it uh, buried in the ice, and there was much, much, much more treasure all around it um, in the frozen waters while they were um, fighting a white dragon that they ended up also heroically freeing some um, people who were enslaved by the dragon sphere up there. And he probably exaggerates on the heroics of them freeing the people, even though it was likely an accident, uh, and then says that they got the bow from the ice before so, they left. So Damien goes into even more history. He's like, see me. Um, this bow was a um, was a, uh, a, a historic item from the from their, her ancestors, and it was commissioned and made. And a dragon had stolen it when it was attacking her home city. Um, and Simi hunted it down, found it in the the floor and the lair of a white evil white dragon who had enslaved some local um, uh, some local natives to do its bidding. Not only did they chase the dragon away, but she found through all of the treasure under the ice the bow of her family, which she was able to the retrieve. Highwayman. <laughs> the highwayman. And as she says, highwayman, I'm just going to start clapping. Just give it a clap. Give it a clap. Wow, that was amazing! Oh, that's amazing! And upside down, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she comes down. Woo, Isn't that a problem? You had blood rush to your head? Nah, a little, a little. It's going down now. She told the story great, man. 
That was on my side. All right. Arcturus, did you want to do it? Are you guys sitting around the round table? Anything sure. you guys want to share? I think what, I... What, what, I'm sorry. What happened to the boat? Do we know what happened to the boat? Do you know? I have no idea. Wouldn't but it be great to know what told, happened to it? It was told that Simi might want to return to a cave in another story. I'll tell that another time. I okay, don't want save, to save some for the campfire, Too much time, okay? too much time, yes. Um, but she had mentioned that she might want to retire there and live there and spend out the rest of her days. So, just along the grapevine, but, and that is in the Misty Forest where we just were, so if we have no other more pressing adventures, we could no. go treasure hunting. No way. That's awesome. <laughs> so. Treasure hunting. Can anyone shoot a bow? That would be. I learned. I can, I can, <laughs> I can for that, <laughs> I, I can learn. learn. <laughs> well, and I go into my story form. I think at this point in <laughs> training, I can choose which one. I go into the archer form. So you Whoa. see this constellations all across my body. A large pillow pop out. Is there like a dartboard or something in the tavern? So, <laughs> so let, me, let me clarify. And correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but stares. when you go into your starry <laughs> form, you glow. Um, what is it like? Twenty feet bright and another yeah, twenty gets, feet uh, dim. Ten, the whole tavern ten is bright, like one. Oh, ten. Yeah. So, so he doesn't just turn it. He, like his body disappears, and he is a like a glowing light. Yeah. He's illuminating the situation. He is I definitely asked him about that. And <laughs> and with, this light is glowing. How as do you, you do as that? you guys try to look through the brightness, you see what appears to be the stars, the the constellations in the sky, within it, his his glowing form. Wow. And this time, you guys can look, and there's like a line that is drawing something between the stars, and it is the arrow. It is as the archer. And as he, as you see, that constellation is actually drawn. First, it's like, well, I don't know, it's a bunch of dots. I don't know. This one has connected the dots. And, and um, as you do that, um, over on this wall, they are doing like the small hand axe tosses against the wall. And then you see Arcturus, a magical oh, yeah, this arrow just appears out of nothing. A beam of light. <laughs> And it splits the bullseye. And the actual bullseye explodes and cracks to the floor. Oh, my God. Oh. So, go back. What are the home. guys who are playing? Wait, I thought it was Thorn. Just stop. <laughs> what, 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 the people who are playing, like, using the hand axe, what happens when it just blows up? They're like, they're like uh, holy shit, I'm <laughs> going to that hard. Somebody <laughs> oh, God damn, I kicked your ass, didn't I? <laughs> he thinks he did it. <laughs> Can you talk when you're in a story form? Uh, doesn't say I can't, but I, I think I'll probably leave it at this point. So, so the bar, the patrons, the barkeep, and Sarah are all like, "What the fuck?" They thought it was a fire. They're grabbing a bucket. We're like, "Holy shit! It's a fucking glowing star, man!" I tossed some five silver. hundred gold. For the, uh, I'm sorry for the board. All right. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 okay then. Jamie so, goes, oh, Arcturus. Yes. Isn't that a star? It is. Huh. Are you drawing power from the stars? I think so. Well, I, I use this to focus and show a large blue crystal. I remember oh. how effective that was from when we were in the fight. So, so just ask, Arcturus, what are you? I'm, I get my powers from nature. I'm a druid. That's Wow. Like, you just pull from the sky. Like I've heard the I don't know Jewish. What? <laughs> okay, we just got banned. <laughs> hey, at least he's not delivering a package. <laughs> at least. <laughs> this is what I got in return for the package. Oh! Hey! Oh. hey when I gave her the package, I blew up into a star. <laughs> <laughs> I became holy! Heavenly. Heavenly. Well, that's very cool. Wow. Alright. Did you get your herb out? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I learned how to fly my dragon. No, you learned how to ride your dragon. Oh. She doesn't fly yet. She no, she flies, but you can't ride her while she's flying. No, oh, so you, you ride her like a horse or a mountain? You can ride her on the ground right now. Really? Okay. 
Yes. Okay, that's good to know because that was supposed to be done with the. <sighs> It was in the you have the, you've had the material for over a month now, girl. <laughs> this is her third printed copy. <laughs> you printed copy. You gotta read it. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Um, you haven't even read it yet. Why do you tights. tell him? It's just gonna pop his head. But when she she can't yet knocked off. Well, no, sorry. No, I can't. No, yet. You can't yet. Yeah. 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 Well, her off. I have to spend like four hundred gold. Yeah. 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 So she tells you guys that if she can gather 400 gold, she can become un, unmountable. And her dragon. I don't know if I want that. Undismountable. <laughs> and her dragon will will be harder to hit, so the dragon is less likely to take damage. That's great. So, um, a skill that a skill that I have developed. Uh, Skinny. Skinny. A skill that I think would be useful is scan the perimeter. So. Um, I can use a bonus action to scouting to to yeah to check out any any invisible creatures or hidden creatures within sixty feet I can see. Is it of you or of your dragon? Uh, I think it's us. Outrider only me. No, outrider only meaning you have to be the outrider versus the other. So when you were at level one, you had to pick either the outrider or the knight. Okay. So it means only the outrider has the option to pick that maneuver. Gotcha. Okay, then the dragon. Can but you can tell me. You can tell me. Oh, Barbara. You are all full of surprises. That is a sparkly D20. Mm -hmm. And colorful. So you have the scan the perimeter. What else the did you have? Screen. Um, well, the other ones are evasive maneuvers and coordinated flank, so it's just a little bit of a pop on the fighting. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Well, damn, Lux. Everybody else did all yeah. What did you do yeah, the last couple of days? actually does. He leans forward and he's like, you're all so full of surprises today, but Lux, you haven't shared. What did you do? I went to the temple, got days. holy water, bought a silver mirror, wrote down some holy scripts for my spells as material components. How boring. Anything uh, else? And uh, uh, Deliberately talks in a monotone. Yeah, I'm very boring. Sorry. <laughs> I'm right. impressed by everyone else, though. It's so, going to be an august group to be part of. Will, eventually you're yeah. going to uh, you're going to go back to your uh, paladin trainer, and yeah, your we'll trainer is going we'll to tell you, oh, you're ready for your first mission, yes? I am. I have need of you and whichever team that you have acquired to escort and protect some cargo on a ship that's on its way to the island of Snowdown. It's not that far. However, the seas can always be dangerous. <gasps> if anything attacks, make sure the ship, the people, and the cargo are safe. That is my duty to protect everyone. Once you're done with that, um, you can stay there, return here, whatever you want, but your mission is to get it there safely. Excellent. That's you, all I need to know? You need to leave in the morning. Uh, is there anything waiting for, waiting me on my return? Uh, once you arrive at the uh, port of Sire Westfall. Sire Westfall? How do you spell Sire? Or it's actually yeah. Seer. Czar. C A E R. That is that be Czar. Czar Westfall. W E S T P H A L. He says. As he pulls off from his neck, and you see a chain, and then a medallion appears from under his armor, with the lo with the symbol of Thorn. Mm -hmm. He goes, "Show them this." Okay. And, that, uh, it, has it a, was it really large, heavy, or? Ah, uh, it's um, I don't know what is that like about a two inch two inch diameter. Mm -hmm. um, he says, uh, "Show them this," and then as you look at it on the back side. Um, it shows the symbol um, of the pallet and order that you're in as well, yeah. Okay. So you've got, you know, Thorm on one side and the pallet and order on the other. He goes, don't know, don't know who you are and what you've done. And, and without, que without questioning, I'm going to... Kyer. Kyer? Without questioning, I will, without questioning, I'll say, I will ask my band and uh, set on as soon as we can. Very if well. there is a problem with that, I will return immediately. 
Just make sure everything gets there safely. Everything and everyone. Everything equals the cargo. Equals the cargo, and then everyone, everyone being the my passengers, my party and passengers. Okay. That is true. Do I? I do. I don't. Don't need to know anything more to be successful in a mission. The waters can be dangerous. That's why we're sending you to protect them. Uh, any ideas of what what might be some of the dangers that might be in the water besides? <laughs> If I gave you the answers to the test, it wouldn't be a test now, would it? Mm -hmm. A test. Excellent. Another one of them. Another one of those. Uh, before I depart, What's in there, is one, there is one important thing that I believe, as part of this order, I need to have. Or I need to, I need to acquire. And that's holy water. Should I, should I get that from you, or should I go somewhere else? How much do you feel you need? I need sprinkles, so I'm assuming... A vial gives me what? Ten sprinkles? Something like that? Sure. I need two vials. He points over to a shelf on the side. You guys are in the temple. He's yeah. like, there's like a stack of them. He's like, there's a stack of like probably like ten or fifteen. He goes, go ahead and take two. Okay, I'll take two vials of holy water. Thank you, sir. Whatever the hell. Whatever the <laughs> Whatever the hell. Whatever the hell is. <laughs> <laughs> no, All right. Peace. Oh, yes. So with that, you guys can take making any preparations you guys feel you need to do.